Sometimes life gives us lemons. Sometimes it gives us lemonade. Other times it gives us something entirely out of left field that makes us say WTF. But no matter what obstacles come, there is most often a way out on the other side and we are once again victorious. My name is Dr. Rowe, and you are listening to my podcast about resilience. Every guest shares a tragedy to triumph story to give listeners like you the inspiration to push through every single day. Listen now as my next guest shares how they were life jacked. What do you do? When your furry best friend may be facing his end of days. My name is Dr. Rowe, and this is LifeJack, the Resilience Podcast. LifeJack is when an unfortunate or unplanned event happens to jack with your life. My guest for this week, Dr. Michelle Slater, is a scholar of comparative literature and president of the educational nonprofit May Apple Center for the Arts and Humanities in Connecticut. She holds a PhD in French literature from Johns Hopkins University. There is a saying that dogs are a man's best friend. Well, in this case, a woman. Dr. Slater will share the resilient story of her German shepherd, Brady. Brady and Michelle shared a unique connection that allowed them to communicate telepathically. Her book, Soulmate Dog, chronicles their incredible relationship. And she will share her journey of resilience by remaining positive and practicing gratitude. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. Thank you so much for being a guest on my show. How are you? Hello, Dr. Rowe. Thank you so much for having me. I'm well. Thank you. Awesome. Now, you know, I, of course, did lots of research about you as I was preparing for this episode, but my listeners don't know that much about you. So if you don't mind, can you do me a favor and just share a little bit about yourself with the listeners and how your dog Brady came into your life? Yes, absolutely. I had always loved dogs. I, I grew up in a family that, that loved and respected dogs and, and animals. And in addition to being trained in French literature, and comparative literature, I'm also trained actually in animal studies and philosophy. And so I've also written articles about the animal-human relationship from a philosophical perspective. And even though I find that today philosophy is, is very open to challenging the limits that have been set in place for centuries between the animal and the human that really deny the animal a place that is worthy of respect until now. But I found that even now, it's lacking in areas that we didn't understand until I met Brady. And Brady was an eight-week-old German Shepherd when I met him. And it was shortly after I had finished my PhD. And I was very eager to welcome a German Shepherd into my life. I was still missing my childhood German Shepherd. And when I met Brady, it was like that. It was just like that coup de foudre, as we say in French. It was like that thunderbolt where I, it was like I fell in love at first sight with, with this puppy. And from that moment, we were inseparable. And I, I found that I respected him and we shared a gaze and we love spending time together, and I, and I realized that he respected me, too, and we developed this very special bond, which I write about in Soulmate Dog, and it, and it built in several ways, which were astounding to me. That's what I write about, and it's, it's also a medical memoir, and it's also interesting because I had written a first book, Starving to Heal in Siberia, about my own medical memoir from overcoming a, a disease that was debilitating for me. So it's interesting that I then write another medical memoir about Brady's own medical journey and how he overcame the odds in a medical way. So you mentioned just a little bit about 
your connection with Brady, but what was the moment that you realized that Brady was not just your pet, but your soulmate dog? Like, you know, he was the dog that was absolutely meant for you. <clears throat> yes. I realized that very early on, Dr. Rowe, when I realized that he loved me unconditionally and that I also loved him unconditionally, that he taught me really what love could be, that he didn't, he didn't, place, he didn't place limits on it. And, I, and, and we just enjoyed, we enjoyed communing together, just making eye contact, being together. And I realized that I would go to any length to do anything for him. And it just, it happened even before he was in the emergency hospital and he had his own medical journey. There, there was one time when he, he was lost and I, I would have gone to the moon to find him. And I, and I, and I did find him. And he, another time he had a, he had stomach bloat. And so he had a surgery early on in his life and I was up all night at the hospital and I realized that I would do anything for him because I had such a deep love for him. And what also played into it was when we started communicating telepathically with the assistance of animal co communication expert, Debbie McGillivray, I learned that Brady had profound messages for me and that he had the faculty of language and reason and we were able to communicate in this profound level to express our love for each other. Wow, that is just simply amazing. I just, I just, I am a dog lover myself, and I've had a couple of dogs over the years. And I do believe that dogs, you know, have a special way to communicate with us if you really are in tune with them. So I have to ask, how did the journey with Brady deepen your understanding of the unique language and bond between dogs and their human companions? Yes. So when I had confirmation, when I started speaking with Debbie and I would ask questions of Brady through Debbie and he would respond and then I even had medical confirmation of some things that were that were expressed through Debbie. And it became so clear to me that it was it it was irrevocably true that, that Brady had the faculty of language that he could communicate with me. And there there was a time when he was in the emergency hospital and I I was questioning whether this invasive treatment for leptospirosis, his diagnosis that caused acute renal failure, uh, was was so invasive that it was that he didn't want to continue with it. I was questioning whether I was forcing this treatment on him, and I kept singing this song from my meditation to him about my light guiding him home, and and. He said to Debbie that he absolutely wanted to continue because the two of us were in this together and my strength gave him strength and that my light was guiding him home. So he was literally quoting the song that I kept singing to him. And it was, it was so remarkable to me and it was such a confirmation that we were in a shared journey together and that he was capable of thoughts that were just as profound, if not more profound than mine were. Wow. And so Brady was diagnosed with leptospirosis. So what exactly does that mean? What part of the body does it affect? I know you mentioned renal failure, but just for, you know, the listener who may not quite be familiar with this, this particular disease, and what exactly led up to him receiving this or you getting this diagnosis? For him. It's a spiroketal disease, and it, can, and it can cause various organ failures, and, it, and in his case, it was, it was renal failure, and I didn't have a lot of warning. I mean, he was a very healthy dog, and 
couple of days before we went into the emergency, and he had been vaccinated for it, you can contract it. For example, rodents can give it to our animals if, you know, they drink from a stream that could be contaminated or might lick some grass where a rodent who had leptospirosis had, had urinated. But he had lost his appetite, and then he was, <clears throat> he had developed an excessive thirst. And then he just collapsed one morning, and I knew I had to get him to the emergency hospital. And it took some time. You know, they ran some tests, and it took some time. We didn't have a diagnosis right away. But this is something that dogs can get vaccinated for. And he had been vaccinated for it, but the early vaccinations, I think, were not as effective as they are now. So it's absolutely something that I do recommend having our dogs vaccinated for and and so he yes he had acute renal failure as a result of this leptospirosis so during the time that you were facing brady's severe illness i mean i could imagine it must have been incredibly challenging because although you all have you had your connection and you know you had your bond but at the same time you know there's nothing he was in pain and there's nothing that you could do about it right so can you walk us through the emotional roller coaster you experienced during that time? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, at that time, Dr. Rowe, I was I was meditating extensively, heavily, regularly every day, even before he'd gone into the emergency hospital. It was I was I was I had a very strong meditation practice. But when he when he had to stay overnight, even the first night, the thought of leaving him there and without me to support him and his feeling of being alone, it was, it was already a horrible feeling. And I just kept, I just kept facing that fear by breathing in the light, making sure to ground myself, making sure that when I was with him at the hospital, I stayed calm. I would meditate in the room with him. I would breathe with him. Our breathing was in sync. So when I started to do that, he would start to sigh like he was letting go. And I just continued to surrender my fear in meditation and to transform it into strength by giving him my love and giving him my support. And I also. Every time we would look at the numbers and the, the kidney numbers were wild, the, the creatinine was too high, the BUN was changing like the wind, and, and, and I would feel fearful because of the numbers. I just kept believing in the skills of the vets, and I was using our emergency vet as well as our hol- holistic vet at the same time. And I had a great I had a, a great team of people around me, but I just kept believing in Brady and in his possibility of recovering. And I, I, I found incredible inner strength through my meditations. That's what really kept us going. Do you feel like there was possibly any resemblance from your own experience battling illness that you could empathize with Brady? I absolutely could. And it's even, it's so surreal in a sense that leptospirus, leptospirosis is a spiroketal disease. And I had late stage Lyme disease, which is also a spiroketal disease. And so I was battling, you know, fatigue and, and I didn't have organ failure, but I did, I did absolutely feel a a bond and a sympathy over that and 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 even conversely on days that I wasn't able to take Brady for a walk because of my own illness he never insisted he never begged he just would curl up with me contentedly and and support me so I felt like we did have this very symbiotic relationship about being compassionate for each other's for each other's medical journey. So the resilience of both you and Brady is a central theme in your book, Soulmate Dog. 
what are some of the key moments that exemplify this resilience? Well, I think that Brady, I think that for, for me, my resilience came from continually believing in his capacity to heal and telling the vets that every day to just not give up on Brady, don't give up on him. I felt like my unconditional love for him fueled my belief in his recovery. And I just kept building inner strength by face it, facing, facing my fear about it and finding this inner well in, in the face of adversity and, and not giving into fear or doubt, but continually building and reinforcing that inner reservoir belief in his ability to recover. And I had done that very much with myself with Lyme disease. So it was like this mantra of never give up and to believe in each other. And, and so, I, so even when, for example, there was a night that his numbers just didn't look good and the vets were concerned, and I decided I would spend the night on the concrete floor with the IV machine buzzing in the background so I brought my sleeping bag and I slept with him to get him through the night. And he just put his head on my chest and we, we just curled up and snuggled the way that we would do at home. And he seemed to rally after that. And I don't know if it was my snuggle therapy or if it was just a moment that he was overcoming. And when he came home from the emergency hospital, not to give away too much plot of soulmate dog, but when he did come home after two months in the emergency hospital, he had enormous challenges to face. He had lost so much weight. He had such a long ways to go. And I just kept sharing my strength with him. And he just kept giving me his love and showing me with his gaze and with his gestures and with his telepathic communication that he was able to keep going. And then when he had little milestones, he would just like, he would give me this look like he was panting in laughter. And like he had this contented gaze and he would become playful again. And so we just kept building on those moments. And that's what really saw us through. So we, were, we, we remained deeply connected throughout his journey. And I was I was so steadfastly present for him. For me, that's what building resilience is, that you continually find your inner strength in the face of adversity, and you transform it into, you transform those fears into strength through your love and through your tenacity. And that's what we did. And through the gratitude, I kept expressing gratitude over and over and over again to all of the vets, to all of the people who are supporting us, to my family and to my partner at the time. And, and I feel like that, that method of always expressing your gratitude for what is going right and what you do have is, is tremendously helpful in, in facing fears and building resilience. Now, you have discussed that modern integrative veterinary medicine played a significant role in Brady's care. So can you kind of explain what exactly is modern integrative veterinary medicine and, you know, what makes it different and how did it contribute to his survival against the odds? That's an excellent question, Dr. Rowe. I'm so glad that you've asked it. And I would like to credit his holistic vet, Dr. Nate Heilman, who owns Chi Vet, along with his wife, Teresa, in Shelburne, Vermont. And after we came out of the emergency hospital, we were in Vermont a lot with my family, and he spent extensive time with Dr. Nate Heilman. Dr. Nate Heilman is a, is a vet who has his degree from from Cornell, and he very much incorporates allopathic medicine, surgery, and 
traditional methods of blood testing, looking at blood cell, red blood cell counts, et cetera, with integrative holistic medicine. So he uses acupuncture to support the body and Chinese herbs and a variety of other modalities that can, that can support the body in, in conjunction with allopathic medicine and the acupuncture and the Chinese herbs that Dr. Nate Heilman used with Brady through, through the remainder of his life, the years that he had after he came out of the hospital, were of, were of such tremendous benefit to Brady. And I just, together, we saw how his, his, his blood tests were returning increasingly to normal and his kidney numbers were stabilizing. And we credited it really to the, to the marriage between holistic, better, holistic medicine and traditional medicine. So what the kidney specialists had been able to accomplish with fluid therapy at the emergency hospital and then what we were able to accomplish um, through alternate modalities. How long did Brady lived past his diagnosis. When he came out of the emergency hospital, he lived for three more years, and they were really high quality years. And so he lived three more years. What was the prognosis that they said, like, you know, how long was he supposed to supposedly live? So I was told at the, emer- at the emergency hospital that with a dog with kidney failure like Brady, they recommended putting the dog down. So, wow, they hadn't given him any chance of survival. So they were just going to end it right then. They they have said, and his his doctor, Beth Whitney, who is the main kidney specialist working on on his case at the hospital, said that today she talks about Brady with with her veterinary students and with her interns. She said not a week goes by that she doesn't discuss Brady's case because it was so, it was so crucial for her in realizing that a, a dog can bounce back from acute renal failure like that with, with, with extensive treatment and, 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 and persistent treatment, and if you don't give up on the dog. And his, his main vet at Smith Ridge Vet, which was his primary holistic vet in the, in the area, has said the same thing and said, Michelle, you have got to write a book about Brady because his case shows that you don't have to put a dog down with leptospirosis who has acute renal failure. And Dr. Nate Heilman says that Brady is one of the highlights of his veterinary career and that Brady taught him so much. So I'm so excited to share this with your listeners and with readers because I would like to ha- I would like for readers to see that they too can save their dog, their soulmate dog. And that's why I really wanted to bring that out that, you know, initially you were leaving from the emergency hospital and I mean, well, not leaving, but as you were receiving the information, they were, you know, immediately saying, hey, you got to put him down. And after that, he ended up living three more fabulous years with you, which is absolutely amazing. And just thinking about our pets, you know, if you said you have this ability to communicate, you had this ability to communicate with Brady and have this connection with him. And I just think about so many of us don't get a chance to make the decision, right, to save our dog, because many of us, our dogs are part of our family. <laughs> you know, they, they are so much a part of our lives. And just to just know that you just walk in to the vet and or the emergency hospital and the next statement is, you got to put them down. That's devastating, you know, especially when this person, I mean, especially when this is a pet that has been such an integral part of your life. So I want to ask, you know, your story touches on the inevitability of loss, because I know we, we all are at some point are going to lose someone close to us, going to lose a pet, because, of course, their longevity is not as long as ours. How did preparing for the possibility of losing Brady impact your relationship with him? And even, you know, you, you were going through a grieving process, right? So even how did, how did it impact 
others around you? Yes. So those are very important questions. And, you know, I just kept believing and celebrating in Brady's ability to live and to keep overcoming odds. And, you know, when we were getting closer to the end and he, his body just wasn't responding as well. And it was, it was, it was fading, so to speak. And so I just, I just continued my, my ever present support and love and gratitude. And at that time, I, I, I was, I was able, because I was, I was ill myself. I was, I was not teaching at the university at that time. I was able to spend all of my time with him. So he was important enough to me that anything else I had on my calendar, I took off my calendar because I wanted to be with him and I wanted to support him and I was able to do that and and when when it came time for him to go I was so hoping that he would choose that he wouldn't have to be put down after all the time he'd spent in the hospital that he would be able to be with me and and he did that and I was with him and of course it was incredibly painful but even up until the very last moment when he was in the process of going, I was holding him and he's never done this before. He put his mouth and his nose in my mouth. Like he wanted to be that close to me. And, and of course I was, he had choreographed his own death so that he could be with me and that we could be together. And of course I was devastated and in every possible way. But I was, I was not a stranger to grief. As I write in, in Soulmate Dog in the beginning, I had lost my mother when I was a child and, I, and I, I, I knew what it meant to grieve and I really honored the grieving process. And I wanted to share my grieving process with the reader because I feel like grief is messy enough when we're grieving other humans and so many books about dogs end when the dog has died. And I wanted to hold the reader's hand through my own grieving process to be there for them as they might be grieving their own, their own dogs and animals. And so I write about that. I write, I write about the process of grieving. And I had a wonderful support team around me. My, my partner, my, my father was my stepmother was they were all incredibly supportive they were also grieving so it was a shared grief and and I and I honored I wanted to honor the the deep and profound connection that we had so I allowed myself to feel everything and to let it all come out and to just also celebrate my love for him and Eventually, in the grieving process, I started writing this book about him. I know you mentioned your views on how you build resilience a little bit earlier in this interview, but in your opinion, what are the best ways to build resilience? Building resilience comes from, it's hand in hand with building inner strength. So it's not giving in to situations where adversity is in front of you. It's not giving in to your fears and melting down and giving in to your emotions and giving up. It's it's not ignoring them either. I think that resilience is meeting your emotions, looking at them in the eye, but meeting them with your own strength, with your own inner ability to stay with a difficult emotion and until it can dissolve or transform into something else. I, I do teach meditation as well. And I, and, and I, it's referred to as distress tolerance. So it's facing these emotions that are difficult. And it's, it's like meeting them and recognizing them and not running away from them. And, and then through that also, you know, with, with a positive view that you will, you will take you will take the beauty that comes out of the adversity and that builds this inner strength. 
And I think if you keep doing that and you do it with love and you do it with patience for yourself and for your loved ones, that you just keep building this reservoir of inner strength. I think also meditation helps. I think grounding yourself helps so that you don't get hysterical when you're facing a crisis. I, I believe that those are the tools for building resilience. Well, Marcel, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. Could you do me a favor and tell everyone how they can get a copy of your book, Soulmate Dog? Thank you so much for having me. I loved your questions, and I, and I, I really appreciate being able to talk about these profound issues that my story with Brady brings up. And, yes, my book can be found. It's available for pre-order at bookstores on Amazon, Soulmate Dog, Michelle B. Slater. And I also have a website, michelleslater.com, and an Instagram page where I, I do share upcoming things about the book, Michelle B. Slater. And there you are. Any last words of encouragement for the listeners? Absolutely. I would say that if you are facing a situation with your beloved animal, to never give up on your animal and just continue to reinforce your relationship with your love. And if you are, if you are grieving, my heart goes out to you. And I just want to validate your love for an animal as being worthy, as being worthy of grieving, of celebrating, of honoring, and, and that you have an opportunity to celebrate your interspecies story of your own. Well, Michelle, I wish you, or sorry, Dr. Slater <laughs> as well, because I want to okay. definitely give you the respect. You've earned it. But I want, I want to wish you and your family nothing but blessings and abundance. And I truly believe that all dogs do go to heaven. So I'm pretty sure Brady is in heaven. <laughs> Thank you uh, But much. please take care. Thank you. you all right. Too. Thank you again for having me. You have just listened to... Life Jacked, the Resilience Podcast with your host, Dr. Rowe. Subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, and any other podcast streaming platform. Remember to live, laugh, love, learn, and then repeat. See you in the next episode. <music>